Well, here's little Esmeralda. Little is just a is a term because, as you can see, she's not little. But she's been coughing and sneezing very violently. So oftentimes that's the result of either allergies or foxtail. I think I've had videos of both of those on my videos. But what makes this interesting is that um, she, I looked down at her tonsils and she's got huge tonsils and she easily seen and you can see the pockets of the tonsils. So that's what I want to show you today. Kim is putting the needle in and getting blood back and injecting the propofol, which follows the pre-medication of Dextormator. The Dextormator wasn't quite enough to do the procedure we needed to do, so we followed up with a low dose of propofol, which will induce general anesthetic. She was blinking and looking at me just a second. A little more? A little more, because there's resistance. So they're gauging how much propofol to give. They're barely, they're just giving enough to make sure they can get the tracheal tube down there, her throat, her windpipe, sorry. And then we can take, yes. get a good look at the tonsils and up the nose. <laughs> you can see a big 126 pound dog isn't always very easy to move around. It takes two or three technicians, usually a doctor, but I'm filming. So Kim's got the huge elephant sized tracheal tube she's going to measure it, make sure it doesn't go too far down the windpipe, and then she's going to put it right down the trachea. We're going to be looking right in there in a few minutes. So what we can see is there's the big old tonsil. See it? Ooh, and look at that. Look at that. Look at if I were to grab the... Look at the hair coming out of it. That's not... That shouldn't be in the tonsil. <laughs> That's grasses. She's a cow. She's eating grass. So if we look behind this tonsil, look at that. My God. We'll just put it on her tongue for a minute. Don't let me forget that. There's another one. It's almost like I'm weeding my yard. So, and then I use my otoscope and I look right up the nose and I look in the membranes of the nose and I can see kind of a white hair that shouldn't be there. The nose shouldn't have hair in it. So, okay, I'm grabbing it now. Sure enough, she's got them everywhere. Look at that. She's got, she's got a little hair, uh, one of those grasses in her nose. So let me check again and see if we have anything else. Okay, that's clear. It's clear down here. Nose is very red from sneezing. Okay, that's clear. It's clear in the pockets. I go completely around. And then I'm going to go into the nose. We go kind of in this from the side. And then we move it over. And I wish you could see what I could see. We can try. See if, see if the scope... Can you see anything? It's just red. Can you see any membrane? This is what I see. I see the membranes of the nose. And then if there's a little foxtail in there, it just looks like a little yellow hair. I should have filmed it, but I didn't. So then I use my little alligator forcep. If I want to go in there, I go into those little ch channels and I try to pull it out. Look. Starting to get a bleak, bleak right guys. Uh, that means the anesthetist is starting to wear off and we have her on a little stretcher and we can carry her out. So carry her outside. Oh my goodness. Just like taking a piece of luggage. Hey ho, away we go. <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes we have to let them wake up outside in a kennel and we stay with them and monitor them, but, but we just don't have the room in our indoor kennels. She's starting to breathe hard as you can see, and she's starting to blink and swallow.
Oh, there you are. Hi. And her eyes come out. Now she's oh. looking around. She's going, ooh, I don't like this. Ooh, what happened to me? That feels a little better. She's moving. Oh, hi. She says, whoa, where is this? Whoa. I'm on a stretcher. Whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, I think I'll get up. No, I think I won't. Well, let's see. I'll move my legs. No, I guess I won't. Let's see. One more turn. Yeah, okay. Well, that's okay. We're doing... That's good for the core. You're doing oblique sit-ups. That's good. One more. Okay, lay down. So when they come out of anesthetic, they're very uncoordinated, as you would be, or I would be. But in this type of anesthetic, um, in the, in, and with the, with the um, antidote to the to the Dex Dormador called Anacidan. You can see they come up pretty quick. And uh, and she starts sneezing, then we're going to be very sad because that means we still have a piece in there, but she's breathing good, she's feeling good, she's looking around, so. Good morning, Esmeralda. Yeah, you're in a kennel. You're looking around going like, I don't remember anything after I got in the car. What is that? Who are you? Where's my mom? It'll all become clear when your mom comes back. So Esmeralda is now standing up just within a few minutes after anesthesia. That's why I love the propofol and the Dex Dormitor um, with the antidote. So she's looking around, well, she's gonna sit down. So it's not perfect, but we don't have to worry about her being under for a long time because she's not. So Esmeralda was a wonderful dog. She was so loving and so kind to us, and she provided a great learning situation to look down the throat. Now, I just want to orient you. The tongue was at the base of the picture, at the very bottom of the picture, the movie, and then the two tonsils were above it. Those tonsils, if you could look down your dog's throat and pull its tongue out a little bit, you'd see its two tonsils sit side by side over, right over the tongue. Now, when they breathe in or they eat, grasses uh, and plants with foxhells in it, as they swallow those grasses, pass by those tonsils and those pockets and get jammed in there. That's how she got those. And then as they sniff in the ground, sometimes they'll sniff up pollens or dust, which will cause them to sneeze. And, and that could be just kind of an allergic sneeze, mild sneeze, which Benadryl may help. But if they sneeze violently, they could get a piece of grass up in their nose or what we call foxtails in California, which is just a plant seed. Now, that the gra gra grasses that I took out of her tonsils and her nose were not foxtails. Those were kind of a wispy uh, grass that you usually see growing near, they're, they're ornamental plants that you see growing in coastal communities. So we got all those out of there. I gave her a shot of cortisone to decrease inflammation. And I use Dex Dormitor uh, as a sedative or pre-anesthetic because I thought we could do the whole procedure just on a sedative. But she wouldn't let me look really well behind her tonsils. And when I saw how much grass she had back there, I really needed to use a more powerful anesthetic. So I followed it up with a little injectable propofol. It's that white injection that you saw the technicians give. And that pro provided general anesthesia so we could really look up her nose and behind her tonsils and do a good job because if we don't get all those grasses out then she's still going to skag and sneeze and when you spend a few hundred dollars you want the job done right and that's what we try to do. But anyway uh, after the, the propofol the injectable anesthetic wears off very quickly and we had an antidote for the Dex Dormitor it's called Anacidan and uh, it what it did, it took all traces of the pre-anesthetic out and the sedative out. And then once the, in, the injectable anesthetic wore off, which is the propofol, which is very short duration, and then the isofluorine, the gas wore off, Esmeralda was back within just about 15 minutes and looking at us, as you saw. So that's really a nice, safe anesthetic to use for young, healthy dogs. Anyway, if you get a chance, check my website, Dog Dish Diet. Not a day goes by that a client doesn't thank me for telling them about uh, the nutritional treatment of disease, itchy dogs, dogs with seizures. Just yesterday, a woman told me that just her dog was having seizures that just weren't controlled by medication, but when we took 
the dog off all wheat products. We went grain free and gave him more oils in the diet. The seizure stopped and her dog had a great six years of its life. The last six years, because it was a little bit older dog, didn't have to take all the, the medications that made it kind of woozy and just nutrition really helped. So you can do the same thing with dogs with skin problems and ear problems and bladder problems. Uh, try going grain free. Try going Try giving more oils in the diet. Try feeding home-cooked food to your dogs or your cat. Check out Dog Dish Diet. Have a great day.